Hey guys, welcome back to ATO Audio. Thanks for tuning in today. We're going to go ahead and get started on calibrating the power meters and setting the idle current on this Pioneer SX780. So if that's something that interests you, please stay tuned. But if you haven't already, please give us a big thumbs up and like and subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get notifications when we produce new content. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, guys, to get started, we're going to need a few things. Obviously, we're going to need the receiver itself. In this case, we're doing this to a Pioneer SX780. We're going to need a multimeter, and we're also going to need a signal generator. So this multimeter is a Kowitz multimeter. Um, it's HT-118E. I'll leave a link in the description below. I really like this meter. I've had it for a couple years now. The first one I had, I actually uh, missed up. It was still within warranty, and Kowitz sent me out a new one, no questions asked. Uh, to replace it under warranty and so it's very seldom you get a, an experience like that so I do recommend this company and so I'm I'm very fond of this meter I've had it like I said for a few years now and so I'm very happy with how it works the signal generator I'll be using I got from Amazon and it's a uh, Finestri uh, DSO TC3 and so this actually does a couple different things it's a uh, components tester it's a signal generator and so uh, I use it just when I'm doing like small little things to send a signal in, uh, whether I'm calibrating uh, power meters or if I'm just trying to check uh, to see the path of signal. So I recommend this too. It's small, which makes it very easy to use in circumstances like this. And so those are the things you're going to need. And then obviously we'll need the instructions from the service manual on how to complete the calibration of the power meters and how to set the auto current. Once you guys have all these, you have everything you need to get started. All right, so let's get started. So in order to do this, I recommend having some plastic screwdrivers. You definitely don't want anything metal in while you're poking around in here while it's on. And so we're going to be playing with pins 9 and 6 to adjust the idle current. And so when we do that, we're going to be using these two variable resistors here that are in blue to adjust the left and the right side channel. So the first channel we're going to do is the left, and we're going to go ahead and take our positive lead and we're going to put it on pin number nine. And our negative lead will be attached to the chassis of the receiver. And so we'll go ahead and adjust this variable resistor until we get it as close to zero as possible. So I apologize you guys can't see my multimeter, but I'll let you know what it reads. So I'm going to adjust this. And these are very sensitive, so it's easy to go too far to the left or too far to the right. So we'll go back and forth. And so right now, my multimeter is reading about 3 millivolts on that left channel. And I'm having a hard time getting any closer to zero. So I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to go ahead and transfer my positive to pin number 6 now. And so this is going to be the right channel. And so the right channel is going to be this variable resistor in the blue here on the right hand side and we'll go ahead and start adjusting that so i'm starting at like negative 20 right now millivolts and we're going to adjust it backwards until we get as close to zero as possible no one too far there all right and we're about three millivolts right there actually one millivolt so that's really good so i'm gonna go ahead and put it back on pin number nine and just make sure that we're still close i'm gonna see if i can't get that one closer to when I got the right channel now. And went a little too far. All right, so one millivolt right there as well. So it's important that you guys leave this on for a few minutes, about five to 10 minutes, let it warm up and before you do this adjustment. So that way you've kind of brought it up to temperature and uh, power before making these adjustments because it can fluctuate a little bit. So now we've adjusted the idle current on the left and the right channel and so we're ready to move on to the power meters so using the same orientation what we're going to do with the power meters is we're going to have to change our multimeter and basically put them into the speaker outputs in the back so I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up and then we'll come right back okay so now we're set up to go ahead and adjust the uh, power meters and so to do this you're going to need a multimeter you want to make sure your multimeter is set to AC volts and you're going to take the positive and negative, and you're going to plug them into the actual speaker terminals. Then you'll need a signal generator. The instructions call for signal generator to put out a one kilohertz signal into the aux. So I've gone ahead and done that, set that up, and I have that plugged into the back with the RCA cables. <clears throat> 
into my aux channel. Make sure I've got my switch uh, switched over to the aux and I've got my speaker A selected, which is where my multimeter is. Once I do that, the instructions say that we need to turn up the volume until we get to 20 volts uh, RMS. And so we're gonna just basically look here and we're gonna try to get that as close to 20 volts as possible. And so make sure it's in volts and not millivolts like I was just in. And then we're going to turn the volume up until we get to 20 volts. A little too far. And so these volume controls, potentiometers are very sensitive. So you may not be able to get it exactly to 20 volts. You just want to try to get it as close as you can. Oop, we were really close there. All right, that's pretty darn close. So once we've done that, you want to look at the power meters and you want to set the power meters to 50 watts. And so we're going to be using these two uh, variable resistors in order to adjust the power meters to, to 50 watts now. Okay, so obviously the one on the left is for the left power meter. The one on the right is the right power meter. And these are the white variable resistors uh, if they haven't been replaced and they're still the original ones. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. So that's the left channel. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the right channel. And now they were spot on on the front. And so I'll go ahead and move the camera around and I'll show you guys what it should look like once you have it at 20 volts you've adjusted it, you've got your signal generator at one kilohertz, what the power meter should look like uh, to know that you've done this correctly. So this is what it should look like if you've done this correctly. Both power meters on the left and right are both reading 20, I'm sorry, 50 watts for each one. They're aligned and our multimeter very close to 20 watts. And so that's what it should look like once you've got it calibrated and now it's all complete. So we're ready to uh, put it back together and this receiver has been calibrated for power meters and also the idle current has been set. So we just got done calibrating the power meters and setting the idle current on this Pioneer SX780. And so we've already done a lot to this receiver. If you remember in our previous video, when this receiver came in, it wasn't working. So with your help, we quickly diagnosed uh, this issue. We checked out the power packs and those were fine. And then we started looking at the power transistors. And we quickly identified that Q25's voltages were off. So after replacing Q25, uh, this unit worked fine. The re we got the relay click and we got sound. And so that didn't really matter because in this restore, we're going to replace all the power transistors. And we went ahead and replaced all the electrolytic capacitors in the power section. We also replaced Q26 in the protection circuit along with the electrolytic capacitor next to it. After that, we moved into the tuner board. We replaced those pesky... Uh, 2SA726 transistors with a modern equivalent of a KSA992s. And we've got the receiver or the retuner starting to work a little bit better. However, we still weren't happy with how the FM was working, so I went ahead and did an FM alignment on this receiver, and now this thing is working really good. And so in another video, I'll go ahead, guys, and show you how to do an FM alignment on an SX780. So if that's something you really want to see, make sure to let me know in the comments below. So, electrically, this unit is in good shape and it's sounding really good, but we still got to focus on the cosmetic parts of the receiver. So, there's two things we still need left to do. We need to clean the faceplate and get the knobs all sparkly and shiny. And then, lastly, we're going to go ahead and put on a new vinyl wrap on the case itself. So, stay tuned for future videos where we do both of those things, and I'll let you guys know my tips and tricks on how to get those things accomplished. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, like and subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get notifications for future videos. And thanks for tuning in today, guys.